today we're going to talk about commercial hemp permits that should be available by October. And this is a release that was done on the 13th of May, specifically where the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Toko Deviza, indicated uh, in a, a budget speech uh, discussion that uh, they should be ready to allow for commercial permits of hemp by October. Ross, this is long overdue in my opinion. I know you say that as well uh, from our discussions. Uh, what is your take on this uh, news and information? Yeah, look, I think this is a great move forward. Um, obviously, a few years back, we had the research permits that were getting issued for him. Um, now, this is a step in the right direction. I think this is the way the cannabis industry needs to move forward. And I think it's exciting. I think in terms of the master plan, they're definitely sticking to their guns and they are moving forward. So this is one of the movements there where we're actually going to see something transpire. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I think there's going to be a lot of compliance behind this as well, um, in terms of obviously regulating it and how, how they're going to regulate it. Um, and yeah, I think the Department of Justice will obviously be on board with this big time. It's just a matter of what input they're going to be giving to it. You look, I mean, she did urge Parliament to remove hemp from the drug trafficking uh, legislation. <laughs> uh, there are some definitions that need to come in here in terms of allowable THC limits around hemp, uh, whether that's, you know, like 1% with, uh, you know, the Swiss or whether that's 0.3% or 0.2%. I mean, that's all to be debated. I think the benefit here really comes in in terms of the agricultural um, processing to products that are used for textiles, fibers, plastics, hempcrete. I mean, th this should drive job creation. It should allow for things like what we see inefficiencies in terms of imported hemp going to dashboards for BMWs. Hopefully now we will see uh, agro processing facilities being set up uh, post October, uh, where these type of products can be locally harvested, processed and put into those kind of uh, applications. So for me, I mean, that that's hopefully what we will see uh, from these hemp permits is a full commercialization cycle. Uh, the big question, and I know this comes up and we, we've always had this one is, um, I still gonna bring it up, which is agro processing for hemp. Will it include or exclude CBD? And I mean, this is one where we've got to almost look at the US market because the US market essentially allowed for um, the farm bill where you can grow outdoor hemp and you can process that hemp into a CBD product. So for me, that's, and I want to talk about it in terms of foodstuffs. Um, because here's the thing, SAFRA has the right to regulate medicines. They are allowed to set up a Schedule 0 for complementary medicines. They are allowed to do Schedule 4 and 6 for prescribed medication uh, with a specific outcome based on clinical trials. Um, I want to talk today about CBD for foodstuff. Uh, technically, cosmetics and foodstuff is controlled by the Department of Health, Directorate of Food Control. Um, how do we get agriculture to work with the Department of Health outside of SAFRA in this discussion and really allow them to potentially process, agro-process hemp and allow for CBD to be extracted? Because, I mean, the hard thing here is if we exclude CBD uh, from processing, we essentially are going to sit with a very common situation, which is CBD isolate from the U.S., is going to proliferate in Africa. We're just going to keep importing it because I know we've talked about this. You cannot have an indoor cultivation or a controlled cultivation condition set up for a medicinal product like a 22C license that's intended for you know medicinal products that are going for export. Even if that gets faced towards the consumer domestic market in South Africa, it's too highly regulated, those cultivation conditions to really allow us to compete with outdoor grown CBD isolates. And I mean, Ross, I'll bring you in here because I mean, for medicinal purposes, sure, you need to have a highly controlled cultivation area because you're producing a medicinal product. Um, in terms of the US outdoor grown, I mean, why is it that they're allowed to have these infused beverages with CBD in it uh, that's grown outside in hemp fields and yet we are expected to grow everything in a very controlled manner and compete against that. What's your view on that? Look, in terms of medicine, I can understand 100%. I mean, you want a safe and efficacy product. So I understand that 
But when it comes to hemp, the best way to do hemp is as cheap as possible. I mean, let's be real. You're not exactly going to go put a 50 million rand facility to go and make a few ropes. <clears throat> so, yes, with the hemp side, I think we're going to have to follow America's model here. I think we're going to have to try and go beyond or extending beyond the scheduling um, in terms of how hemp is going to enter the market, especially in South Africa. I mean, we've, we can do things a lot cheaper than what the states can. And that means we can also do a quality hemp product as well, based on knowledge, based on experience. Um, so yeah, I think it's just a matter of the Department of Justice getting involved in this, um, the Department of Health, the Directorate. Um, they all need to jump on this and say, right, guys, you know what? We can't keep importing and leave, let, let money exit the country. Let's rather keep the money inside the country. Let's do the isolates, get it into whatever food stuff that we want to produce. So whether it be beverages, whether it be um, creams, um, edibles. I mean, we haven't even touched on edibles. Let's say honey, for example. I mean, there are honey brands out there currently, um, which shouldn't actually be regulated by SAPRA specifically, um, but it should be regulated by the Department of Health. And yeah. I think this would be a great strategy moving forward for them to allow a new market for entry. Yeah, I fully agree there. I mean, here's, here's the bottom line, which is very simple. SAPRA regulates medicine and complementary medicine. Um, now, the definitions of complementary <clears throat> medicine can be stretched to include certain things, and uh, perhaps there's some foodstuffs and novel foods that will fall within that definition. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to build an industry and commercialize an industry. SAPRO's role in honey is a good example. Um, you, it's not their job to regulate honey. Uh, yes, maybe they could say they re regulate a scheduled substance that goes into that honey, but really it's the director of food control that has to mandate your uh, Department of Health needs to step in and say, we regulate food products and what goes into food products, and we regulate the cosmetic industry as well, according to the Act, that's including disinfectants in terms of the 1972 Act. So th there has to be this almost need for Department of Health outside of the scope of SAFRA and the Department of Agriculture to apply themselves correctly to say, you know what, what are the inherent risks of a novel food? Right, the UK has looked at that issue and they've addressed that issue. Um, I think it's important for the US model to be considered in this regard, which is sure, the US probably needs some increased regulations on food stuff. I'm not gonna maybe say that you're allowed to just do what you want. But currently we know that products are proliferating uh, in South Africa, that's in food stuff, that's in cosmetics. And I, I just feel that, well, you know what, it's not SAPRA's job to regulate that space. I think it's the Department of Health's Director of Food Control to step in here, give guidance, provide guidance, and say, look, if you're going to put CBD in honey, you know, firstly, the source of that CBD, right? Currently, and let's just be honest about this, every Schedule Zero product pretty much on the shelf out there, uh, there will be some exemptions, but most of that's coming from U.S. sourced isolate, which is outdoor grown. So, I mean, if we're allowing for U.S. outdoor, outdoor grown hemp to be extracted and put into products on South African shelves, why would we not allow for South African products to be extracted and put into South African products and South African shops? I mean, it's a double standard because at the end of the day, are we, are we finding the U.S. isolates from outdoor fields of green basically being used? Or do we want South African uh, outdoor grown fields of hemp to be used for processed products to go into our products? So, or, you know, isolates to go into our products. I mean, and I, I don't want to extend beyond the scope of, I just want to use CBD as an example because it's, you know, whether we're talking about the broad spectrum, the whole plant, sure, there's a whole conversation here, but on just the grounds of isolate, why are we allowing for U.S. hemp-grown cultivated isolate to proliferate here, but we want to highly regulate everything that has to do with CBD? Um, and I mean, yeah, sure, do what you want to with a medicine, uh, but for uh, food stuff and for the scope of cosmetics, Surely we should be able to get the director of food control and agriculture to work on this problem and between those entities deal in solving the problem so that we can allow for quality to still maintain itself. Ross, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate your time once again. Uh, I'm glad we got to discuss this positive potential news about hemp permits by October. And I'm looking forward to our next discussion 
that'll be very soon on some recent uh, acquisitions as well in the uh, cannabis licensed medical purchasing space. So Ross, thank you once again. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the input.